Hey everyone, and welcome to our young adult podcast, Adultish. Hey everyone, we are so glad that you're here. Welcome to our podcast. And today we have an incredible conversation planned for you guys about revival. And in order to have this conversation, we've invited two very special guests. And so I want them to quickly introduce them. And we're gonna start ladies first. So my name is Ren and I serve as a CFS intern here. And I also serve on the young adults team for guest services. Let's go, all right. And my name is Alex and I get to serve as the campus pastor for the West Kendall campus. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for saying yes. And, and we have a, a great conversation in store. But before we get there, quick little icebreaker. You guys ready? Bring it on. Are you sure? Yeah. And you, and, and the, by the way, this is young adults. We, we, we get a little crazy up in here, all right? And so here's the thing. All right, what is the craziest thing that you've seen or experienced at church? And by crazy, like whatever crazy comes to mind. I, I, I'll take it away. So my first time ever being invited to preach, it wasn't at my own church, ever being invited to preach. Um, I'm, I'm 18 years old and I get invited to a Haitian revival, actually. Hey. <laughs> and they said, come preach. And so I, I preached and I, I went through my material. It was like 20, 25 minutes. And they, when I finished and I prayed, they said, keep going. And I, no I thought, okay. So I was like, okay, let me share my testimony. Keep going. I kid you not, it was three hours later You're that they lying. finally let me stop. You're lying. Not lying. And then they asked me to take my shoes off <laughs> and they anointed my feet with oil and, and they prayed over me. It was really uncomfortable. I mean, like, <laughs> did you clip your you toenails? Know, I did. My toenails were clipped. My socks were pretty, I mean, after three hours of Holy standing socks, and preaching, yeah, I don't know. Socks, you know? But, uh, but it was really wow. wild and, and humbling. It really was. Keep going. <laughs> no, so are I'm you done, trying I'm to? Done. No, no. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. that is yeah. that is yeah. crazy. It was. That is, it was pretty crazy. Uh, have you ever been invited back? I was. I was invited back um, for another event, okay. and apparently you had to wear a white shirt. So I had to go across the street to the gas station and buy a white shirt. And when I came in again with the shoe thing, they were like, "No, you can't wear shoes in the in the, in the sanctuary. It's holy ground." So I had to preach with no shoes on. Wow. I knew a worship leader. But I got to keep leader. my my socks on that time. Wow. I knew a worship leader that he would take off his shoes before he led worship because he was like, it's holy ground. I'm like, is it though? No, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> it's all right. Tell us, Ren, what's the, cra oh, I'm a little worried about you, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I won't say like, yeah. Tell me, what's, what's one of the craziest things that you've seen at church or um, experienced? So I went to a conference a couple months ago and I was worshiping, I had my eyes closed. I was just, you know, mm. in the spirit. And I opened my eye and all of a sudden, like every second I see someone falling to the floor and I'm like, what's going on? I was just like, spirit, lead me. But I was like, everyone around me was just on the floor. I was wow. like, do I go down too? <laughs> I don't know. Wow, so that was recent. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that, 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 there's places that, you know, yeah. things, things happen. Yeah, for me, you know, I grew up in the church. I was a missionary kid back in Ecuador. And I remember, it's probably one of the craziest things I've seen, but we were in the middle of a worship service. Um, Mind you, my, my father had passed away. We had moved to the capital and the, we had made this church. It's an evangelical church. We had made this church home and very sound doctrine and everything. But I remember one day, like we are, um, you know, when they would like dismiss this, the kids later after worship and like, now you guys can go to your class or whatever. So we're like, it's the middle of the worship. And all of a sudden the drummer starts going crazy. Like, like just just crazy and screaming. And then all of a sudden, like the pastor gets on the microphone. He's like, oh, take the kids out and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out, and the, the drummer, by the way, is a pastor's son. And long story short, he was possessed. Uh-huh. And he was, obviously you can't be possessed. You can't be possessed and be saved, right? You can be oppressed, but that's another conversation for another time. But yeah, he has straight up possessed his girlfriend was doing like Santeria kind of stuff over him and things like that. And we could hear as kids like screaming. Out. Oh, sorry, I know this podcast got dark, <laughs> but go. it was wild. Yeah. I had wow. never experienced that and it was crazy. And yeah, then like the, the, the guy after he snapped out of it, he was telling us that, you know, he, he was already feeling that he had never really trusted Christ as his savior. And he's like, well, no, bro, you, you never have. If, you know, a child of God cannot be possessed. It can be oppressed, but not possessed. And so that was wild. That, sorry, uh, 
viewers that took a, <laughs> that took a turn. But anyways, the reason I think I, I asked also that question was the craziest thing you've seen because revival in today's context is also something that like people make it look and 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 think that it has to be something crazy. It has to be something like very dramatic that happens. And you know, I think that a lot of us or young adults have seen what what was going on in Asbury and, and on the college campus. Um, but the goal of today's conversation is to really like look at revival as something that from a biblical perspective, like what is it and what it's not? And so what, what, what is revival and what is it not? Like, can you guys, you know, anybody want to start and share? Well, I, I love what you're talking about, how like today it could look different. I, I think that the, the God of revival, <laughs> he doesn't change. I mean, we know that in his word that he's unchanging and, and immovable. And so oftentimes when we look at things that are happening today, in order to weigh them, is it something that really God is doing? We look, did God move that way in the past? Mm. Mm. Because That's good. You know, that's, that's a good measure uh, to know if what, what we're doing today, because we do a lot of things in church. Yeah. Is what we're doing today biblical? Yeah. You know, is that the way that God used to do it in the past? Do, yeah. we, do we baptize the way that, that we baptized back then? And now do we worship the way that we worshiped? Not to say that we have to do everything exactly, but God's response to what we do um, is the same. That's good. I like that. Ren, you have anything to say or add to that? I would say like to put it in like simple terms to yeah. me, like revival, it really is just a move of God. Um, and that to me is what number one, unbelievers coming to Christ. Mm. And number two, followers of Christ who are already saved, like super devout Christians yeah. getting deeper into their relationship Amen. with Christ. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that you put it in, in simple terms because I mean, even the word revival, to revive something is mm -hmm. something that is dead to, to, for it to be given life. And I love that you hit on both things is someone that doesn't know the Lord that is spiritually dead, right? Scripture, uh, Roman talks about that, dead in our trespasses, that that person coming to know and, and, and you know, just being revived and we see it, but all, also revival happening within the believer that maybe, you know, there's been something spiritually dead in them in the yeah, sense they're of like, lukewarm. they're lukewarm. They're not pursuing, they're not coming to church anymore. They're, they're just cold in their faith. But when, when someone gets revived, it's like that's been awakened in them. So that's beautiful. And I guess the, the question that leads me to is, what, what is the Christian revival, but what is its goal and its purpose? Like what is the purpose of an actual revival? I would say we go to Revelations. <laughs> Revelation, we see in the book of Revelation that, that John says, remember the love that you had at first. Yeah. And yeah. I think for the, for the Christian who's maybe lukewarm or they don't feel God moving in their life, they feel distant from God. Well, you know, going back to that first love, like that first encounter with Christ, if there was even one. Right, um, right. And, and, if, and then I also think of um, the Church of Acts and how mm. revival then was a lot of unbelievers, people who didn't have a relationship with Jesus, coming to know Jesus. That yeah. would be the goal, like, yeah. like you shared. Yeah, that's great. I mean, um, I think that one of the things, you know, going to what you're saying, and let's just talk about like the, the very hot topic thing right now, which is Asbury, right? I mean, I think a lot of our audience, whether you're listening or watching this, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's all over YouTube, but, what, what do you think? What do you think happened at Asbury? Is can we label it as revival? And what are some of the dangers about looking at Asbury and thinking, oh yeah, 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 we 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 need to have that. We need to bring this to Christ fellowship. You know, what what, what are your opinions about Asbury? Understanding what the goal of revival is. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer? Yeah, okay, you can take it sure. away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like me personally, I yeah, yeah. wasn't at Asbury, right? And sure. so um, I never wanted to say like one just straight thing because right. I wasn't there. Um, but from what I've heard was that it was just just a great time of worship that like never ended, right? Mm -hmm. So it's people that they just all of a sudden became super hungry for God. Um, I've heard some controversial things. Sure. I don't know if they're true because I wasn't there, right. but like some people saying like, oh, the word of God wasn't present. So is it really revival? I think that's definitely a question to ponder on, yeah. you know, like, are, are we preaching the word of God? Do people here know what a biblical lifestyle means? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I heard someone, I don't know who said it, it was a pastor, but there, um, I don't know exactly the, the quote, so don't, you know, quote me word for word, but he said, a revival is impossible to happen without the gospel. Like if the gospel is not understood and, and, and being taught and preached, like that's not really a revival. That's mm -hmm. that I think the dangers of Asbury or, or things like that can be that a lot of young people will look at it as, We'll look at revival as something emotional. Yeah. 
like I felt this thing. What, Pastor, what are the dangers of like emotionalism and, and revival and, and that? Yeah, um, you know, emotions are, are they happen, right? Yeah, sure. We have feelings and, and, you know, the gospel gives me many emotions. Uh, but really when we're pursuing emotions as like the, the end all, like did I feel a certain way, we've missed the mark. And the truth mm-hmm. is that we can, we can sing a song that's really moving without any, you know, real depth, but it's a moving yeah. song. We can create an environment that's, that's very um, intimate and, and we can have people together, right? And, you know, when you bring community, but all those things we can have in a concert, a rock concert. You, right. can, you can go to a concert, your favorite, you know, um, artist in the secular world and be moved and yeah. feel like, oh, one, you know, and be waving your, your lighters. That was amazing. You're right. The di- exactly. The <laughs> yeah. difference, the difference is, was the gospel there. Yeah. Are people being, uh, you know, are they being confronted by their sin? You know, are they confronting their sin and, and recognizing their sin and repenting? And turning away, you know, because sin is death <laughs> and, and, and following God is life. And so are they being confronted by their sin, you know, recognizing it and putting it at the foot of the cross and choosing, hey, today I might have been living this way, but today I'm making a decision, not an emotion, but I'm making a decision that I'm going to I'm going to honor God with the way that I live my life. Yeah, oh, that's so that's good. good. Can I add on? Yeah, to that? please, please. Um, I think something that I'm constantly telling my friends, um, because something that I hear a lot is, oh, I don't want to worship today. I'm like, okay, why? Oh, I don't, I don't feel him. And so like emotions are super, super dangerous. And so I'm always reminding my friends or people I'm mentoring, hey, like you're not going to feel God all the time. He's not a feeling. Yeah. Um, and so don't base your faith on feelings yeah. because if you don't feel God one day, then you're not going to feel him the next and the next and the next. And then you're just going to be like, oh, I don't want to worship. I don't yeah. want to follow him because he's down. not here. That's no. it. Pack up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's... If, if I, yeah, passion I was say, just going to say that yeah. the heart is deceitful above all things. You're, you're right, because yeah. mm-hmm. the enemy is the one that's going to put that, oh, you, you don't feel close to God. God can't be there for you. And we know, exactly. I mean, uh, we know that God is always there with us, yeah. Yeah. you know, if we're believers. I think, you know, I, I used to be in student ministry before, and I, I mean, a lot of our students to, to this day, a lot of our leaders, our young leaders, and especially a lot of our young adults, they, they base exactly like their relationship with God and their feeling of God. Why do you think that that's so dangerous as a young adult yourself? Like, why, I love that you're teaching and, and really really shepherding your, your friends and mentoring them like that, but why do you think that that's so dangerous for a young adult to understand that God is not a feeling and that our relationship with God is not based on a feeling? I think I can speak from personal experience. Um, I know being in middle school and high school, like when I had encounters with the Lord, it was an amazing feeling, right? Yeah. And so obviously you want to stay in that amazing feeling. Cam- the um, camp high, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> camp high, yeah. exactly. Um, and so for me back then, when I would feel that, wow, like that amazing feeling, I'm on fire for God. Mm. And then the second that I didn't feel it, I'm like, I'm not on fire for God anymore. Now I'm conforming to the world again because I don't have that amazing feeling. Um, But then I really just started to remind myself that God is omnipresent. He's with me at all times. I'm not going to feel him all the time and that's okay. But I know that he's here with me to promise in his word. Ooh, that's awesome. That's really good. One of of the things too that that I think can, can be dangerous because I think that when people, they don't feel God, it starts to hinder like the totality of the relationship with God and in, in, in Christian living. Like, well, they don't feel God, so I don't feel like reading my word. Because I don't feel God, I don't feel like reading my word. Because I don't feel God, I don't feel like praying to him. Because I don't feel God, I don't need a fellowship with believers right now. You know what's crazy is that that ideology or that thought process is the same as saying, I'm, I'm hungry, so I'm not going to eat. <laughs> it doesn't make sense yeah, yeah. because... You know, when, when you're thinking, oh, I don't feel God, so I'm not, I'm not going to read the Word. The Word <laughs> is your food. You need to eat that so you can feel full. And feeling full is that feeling of, yeah. I, I feel like I'm close to God. Yeah. And so, you, you know, I think people, they, they look for worship events, concerts, um, and, you know, just, just very event consumer driven. Oh, I'm going to wait till Sunday to be filled right. and to be fed and the, the next big thing. And when, when God's Word uh, it's supposed to be our daily bread, you know, and, and Jesus is the word of God. And so yeah. Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Apart yeah. from me, you can do nothing. He doesn't say abide in worship concerts and inv- abide in, in church. You are the church. Yeah. And so every day you have to be in him. Yeah. So what does, 
for those wondering and, and thinking like, okay, I know what it's not. What, what is true revival look like, whether it's in a place or, or really in, in our lives as, as a people of God? Like what is, I know we talked about a little bit in the beginning about non-believers, but what does true revival actually look like? And, and really, what are, like, I guess, what are the fruits of it and how can it be sustained, right? Like, yeah, I think life change. I think, um, you know, when, when somebody has an encounter with Christ, like Paul did, um, and you realize just how, how broken you are, um, how much of a sinner you are, and what Christ did for you on the cross, yeah. it, it ought to change the way that you live, the way that you think, um, the things that you pursue. And so revival is not something that, it's not like an event that you could measure success based on attendance. Yeah. That's, ooh. Revival really is measured on what happens in the next six months. Mm. Are people, you know, now living transformed lives? Are they seeking counsel for their marriage? Are they um, now in, being discipled? Yeah. Are, they, are they more generous? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> are they showing the fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. Because Jesus is very clear that, that if you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to show the fruit of the Spirit. Right. So I think that, that you know, we look, we look at Acts. In Acts, you know, they broke bread together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. They shared everything they had a need. And it says thousands were added to their number that day. That thousands wasn't the revival. The revival was that the church then continued to spread and people gave their lives for the gospel. The revival came after. And we we often want to look at what's the immediate effect of an event that we plan. And that's not revival. That's just a concert. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's really good. Do you want to add anything to that? (laughs) Oh, that was really good. No, it doesn't hit me. Um, Radical transformation. Exactly. That's something that I'm always bringing up. It's, okay, I've accepted Christ into my life, but is my life changing? Mm -hmm. Um, when When I gave my life to Christ a year and a half ago, Radical transformation. I mean, I awesome. donated my entire closet, got a new, more modest wardrobe. Um, I was so hungry for God's word. Instead of wow. watching Netflix, it was just reading the Bible. Um, music, no more secular, sinful yeah, <laughs> music. Yeah, now it was just worship music and everything was just radically changing. And I was like, that's what giving my life to Christ was. I thought I gave my life to Christ a long time ago, years ago, but it never brought radical transformation. You know, I just sat with somebody from church and, and, and I feel like they are right where you were when, when that happened. Because they're sitting there and they're saying, you know, I've come to know Christ and, you know, there's all these things that I'm doing that I know I shouldn't do and I want to change and I want to change. And, I want, and they're just worried that God is not working in their life. And I said, the desire that you have to change yeah, and do what's right and please the Lord, that yeah. desire is the proof. Yeah. Amen. Because when we say God will give you the desires of your heart, God's word is not saying God's going to give you whatever your heart wants. No, he's going to place desires in your heart. So if you find yourself craving the things of God or even just desiring change and looking at your sin now as something that you you don't want to be part of anymore, even if it still follows you. I mean, that's how you know that you've experienced revival. Yeah, because, I mean, going, speaking by the heart, Scripture says that we have a heart of stone. It's it's solid. It's, It's It cannot perceive holy, biblical, spirit-led things. And that's why, you know, when we do like gospel and altar calls, we don't say like, Lord, come into my heart. My heart is a rock, you know, like give me a new heart and a, and a heart of flesh, one that beats for you, one that is aware of the spiritual things. And that's why, I mean, Ren, I love that you're sharing your, your a piece of your testimony because I think that like revival, this this radical transformation, if I can be honest for me, um, growing up in the church, I always felt like, I always really questioned my salvation growing up. You know, I, I grew up as a missionary kid, as a pastor's kid. And so the gospel is, I mean, I heard it every single day of my life. And then I, you know, when I started also kind of being more involved in church and, and then serving in church, I would see this, like I would see the wrens, mm-hmm. like they were spiritually dead and wow, they are alive. They, they, they lit, like physically look like new people, right. even in their demeanor and, and what you're saying, you even donated your wardrobe and bought things more modest. And I, and I would ask myself like, when did that change happen in my life? And if I can be honest, I mean, and maybe there's someone watching and listening today, like maybe that's, that's a lot of people or, or, or an audience, like I don't, I don't know if I've ever had that radical transformation, but what would give me peace and a, a reminder that I am a child of God was the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because I always tell our young adults that guilt, that comes from the world. 
guilt says you are a piece of crap and you just messed up and how could God ever loved you? That's, that's guilt. But conviction is like you did mess up, but Jesus still loves you and he died for you and he, he wants you to, to continue to run into his arms. And that for me has always been like the saving grace of like, I am a child of God. I belong to him. But then revival, you know, going on for what you're saying is something that is dead, even in a believer's life, even someone that has already given their life to Jesus, there's something that is not like radically living. So what, what would you guys do or say, like maybe thinking personally, like what is something that you could do or, or advice that you could give to, you know, the young adults that are listening or watching this of to create, I know it's like kind of weird to create revival because we don't, we don't do that, but like what is a way that we can position ourselves for that, if that makes sense? Yeah, I would say um, there's, there's a song that I love that, that it says, you know, clear the stage and set the sounds and lights ablaze um, and, and just to remove everything that could be an idol. And, and really, I think if you are pursuing um, that fire from the Lord, right? You want, you want to be on fire for the Lord. You want to see yourself really growing in the things of God. You're reading the word and you don't understand it. You want to understand it. It, it comes, I think, at surrender. Mm. I think it's having a moment, you know, where you get on, not a moment, but a season yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, where you're getting on your knees and you're saying, God, I don't want my own will. I don't know what's good for me. Yeah. I want to surrender my life uh, to you because you designed my life and you know what's good for me. Um, and, and God, have your way with me. That, that's, that's how it happened with me. Yeah. You know, I don't want us to say that emotions are not part of it sure. because for, for myself and my own testimony, when I understood what Christ did for me on the cross, I had already been serving in church for a couple months and everything. But when I understood, I could not sit in a worship service. I could not sit in the worship during church without crying. And I couldn't drive in my car with, and listen to Hillsong or, you know, Lecrae back then. I couldn't, <laughs> and not cry because yeah. God was doing a work in me mm. to say, you know, you've been so far from me, but, but I sent my son. So I think it's spending time with the father, understanding, really facing your brokenness, not hiding from the world wants to hide from our weaknesses, but facing the brokenness, facing all the things that you've done in the past yeah. and knowing that God forgave those things. Mm. Just dwelling on that fact. Um, and I think that God begins to change you when you understand that you've been bought at a price. Amen. And so your, your old life is dead. And now you belong, you don't belong to Satan anymore. You don't belong to your flesh anymore. You belong to him. So I would say a life's obedience is super important for revival. Um, and just for our young adults, I have a young adult like testimony to give. Mm, um, I asked him for permission to share, <laughs> of course. Um, but... We don't need his permission. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. But he's a super devout Christian and he has been for many years. He serves in ministry. He's super awesome, loves Jesus, loves to worship, um, all of that stuff. But a couple weeks ago, I invited him to like a ministry night and we worshiped for like an hour, maybe two hours. And he came and this was something that he said. He texted me the next day. He said, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed and I'm giving thanks to the Lord like crazy. Praise God, I'm so joyful. Legit feel the fire from the Holy Spirit. God revealed himself more and more, deeper and deeper. He said, the Lord is so near, Ren. My life is fully his. Everything I'm doing is strictly for him. I give him the highest praise. Yesterday, I worshiped so hard. I've never worshiped that hard in my life. What resonated the most with me was when you said, putting our dignity to the floor, not being afraid to worship the Lord. I prayed out to the Lord and Ren, his spirit was on me. It was so obvious. That was another level. Hearing everybody just shout out praise to him. I prayed so hard for God to use me, to take me far away from comfort, to convict me, to challenge me. I don't want to be anything like the world. Uh, I want it to be known so quickly that I am his. He's not done. All I can say is yes, yes, yes. It felt so good to, and easy to say yes. I couldn't stop just talking to the Lord. God is real. He is alive. He is here. He's reviving the world. Revival is here. And are you ready? Um, and after he sent that text to me for this next couple of weeks, I've just seen him walk in just radical obedience to the Lord. Amen. He has like this crazy heart just to just like read devos and just constantly pray. He's such a prayer warrior. He's constantly um, making sure that he's being edified and really just listening to his life's calling that the Lord yeah. gave him to ministry. Yeah. Um, so it was just amazing to witness. Wow. You know, um, he, like when I, 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 we get texts like that, I'm sure that you get texts like that, you know, uh, as we get to lead people, it, those are like the best texts to ever receive, right? Like to, to when, when it clicks, it's, it's just like, 
thank you, God, you know? Um, and honestly, to be fully transparent, I also, I, I think this is the enemy working over time in my head, in my brain, but I also am like, why can I personally experience that myself too? And, and then I, I just twist something that is so beautiful and is giving glory to God and what God is doing in someone else's life, but, but, I, but I make it about me. And, you know, leading young adults also in this generation in different campuses, like that happens to a lot of young adults. We see someone on fire for God. I'm like, why, why isn't that happening in my heart? Why isn't that happening to me? And it just reminded me of a verse that, that sets it up and it's Isaiah 57, 15. And he says this, it says, for thus says the one who is high and lifted up, this is God, right? Who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. And so like when I, you know, feel like weird, it's like, man, God desires like for us to be in that state of brokenness of like what you were saying, like I know who I was. I know that before I met you, God, like this is who I was dead, gross in my sin, but because of who you are now in my life, like that alone should bring us joy, should bring us uh, a, a fire and a passion to do what this young man is doing. But I believe that in our lives, we need to have these almost re-encounters with the Lord. Go, yeah, go. You know, that, that, that's what I wanted to say, because I mean, when we, when we um, you know, meet the Lord in a place like that, in a situation like that, and we, we experience his goodness in that moment, I don't want anybody that's that's watching it today to, to feel like, well, I mean, that's the goal. Like, and and then and then after that, I'm gonna stay that way for my whole life. Right. Because the truth is that revival is something that happens every day in your life if you're a believer. We're supposed to deny ourselves daily yeah. and carry his cross. Yeah. So what happens is we're supposed to die every day and be revived every day. Mm. Die to ourselves and, and walk that's in the good. spirit. And what I want people to know is if you've had an encounter like that before, now you find yourself that you're like in a dry season of your life. Yeah. You know, and, and you're like, man, I haven't felt that way again and everything. Um, that's okay. Like, yeah. that's normal. Yeah. That's normal. And it's praying. And, 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 and really what we need, what we need to see more of is, is you know, when, when you're a, a follower of Christ, like being discipled, finding somebody that's going to mentor you so that in those moments where your fire starts to die down, they can fan the flame or, yeah. or the way the word of God says is, you know, stir one another to good works. Yeah. And so we need to have like a, a fan flame because I think that if we're consistent like that, rather than burning real bright and then, and then being a shooting star and just dying out, yeah. um, if we're just consistent about maintaining that fire for the Lord, I think that's gonna be a, a lot more fruitful. Yeah. And, and in thinking of revival, I, I think I would be remiss to not say like the image is, is that of a forest fire. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit here and manufacture it. You don't have to plan a great set. You don't have to plan a great sermon. When you're living on fire for the Lord, when you've submitted yourself and, and God is doing that in your life, yeah. it's gonna pass on. It's gonna be contagious. You know, as you start sharing, the people are gonna see the transformation in your life, the joy that you have. And, and it may take a while, but there's gonna come a point where that, that joy sparks in them yeah. or not. Yeah. And that won't be your fault because right. God is the one that determines, you know, who responds and who doesn't. I, I, you know, I, I think of Jonah. Jonah had great success. He went and he, he preached the gospel and, you know, he said, repent, yeah. right? And guess what? They all ripped their clothes off and they cried and there was revival yeah. in Nineveh. Yeah. But then I know, you know, when we look in, in, in Abraham's life and, you know, you look at Sodom and Gomorrah and, hey, you know, God is going to do something. You know, you guys got to change. You got to change. And there, there was not five good men <laughs> and, and no revival happened. Yeah. And so it's not our responsibility for what God does with our obedience. Our responsibility is just to obey. Amen. Amen yeah. That's awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for, for coming out and having this conversation. I know it's like a, a hot thing out there right now. And, 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 you know, we're not coming on here and saying because we're sitting on these couches that we know all things yeah. about revival. But is there anything that maybe you you didn't say today that maybe you're just feeling like you need to say or, or, or maybe you want to encourage our young adults in a specific way. Um, is there anything? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I would say three things. Number one, stay rooted in God's word, Amen. right? Because we need to make sure that we're being biblical above all. Like we said, the whole feelings thing. So yeah. base it on God's word. Um, number two, get uncomfortable because comfort kills. Um, number three, if you really understand 
the weight of what happened on the cross, like Jesus dying and resurrecting, like that's heavy. Yeah. When you really understand that, like revival will come into your heart. Wow. How old are you? I just have to ask you, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 20. What? I was such an idiot at 20 years old. That's, thank you for sharing. And, and I'm so happy. Um, we are blessed as a church to have young adults like you. Like, a 20 year old that 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 is reading and spending time in the word and i know that you're not perfect i know that we were he, sit here you you tell us about your stumbles but thank you for being faithful to the lord we appreciate you so thank you so much anything else i, I got ahead of you to be honest <laughs> <laughs> oh i know what you're saying about that and so i would just encourage like i said just just that obedience yeah. uh you know god god honors and he blesses that obedience when we walk faithfully to him with him um and he does greater things than we can ask or imagine. Yeah. And revival in our life is one of those things that he does. Yeah. And revival in the lives of those around us. Oh, and we can't, we can't talk about revival without saying the most important thing in revival is prayer. Yeah. We have yeah. to pray. Yeah. We have to pray not that, that our will would be done, but that God's will would be done. Amen. And that he would, he would save people and that he would, he would glorify himself. And, and we lift up his name and, and he'll draw people to himself. Amen. Well, again... Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate you. I know that you've taken time to have this conversation. And for all those that are listening and watching, we pray that you are blessed by this conversation. We pray that you have a better understanding of what revival is, what it isn't. And uh, we're gonna ask if this conversation blessed you, would you consider sharing it with somebody else? Like, you know, send it to somebody. Uh, they can listen to it. They can watch it. But we're so grateful that as a ministry and for Christ Fellowship that we can come here and talk about the things that God is doing. So we love you guys so much and we'll see you on the next episode hey everyone thanks for tuning in to our young adult podcast adultish if you liked what you heard please consider following us on social media on instagram our handle is at youngadults.cf and also follow our church at cf miami we're going to be posting this incredible content once a month so we'll see you next time